Welcome back to another episode of A Mental Health Break with Vincent A. Lancey. I'm excited to launch another episode for you all. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker, coach, and author of the book Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. When I was 21 years old, I was the victim of a hit and run accident while walking home from a friend's birthday. After coming out of a coma and suffering from a traumatic brain injury, or you may know of as a TBI, I soon realized that it was time to put my mental health on a very high pedestal. This transformative experience has led me to create a podcast that is all things mental health. Would it benefit you to hear from mental health professionals and influencers? Would it also add value to your life to hear mental health advocates share their authentic stories and talk about their mental health, the issues they face, and how they actively combat them? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you came to the right place. I want to start by congratulating you for making your mental health a priority. If you missed the last episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. On this episode, I am happy to introduce my two guests, Charles Hamilton and Courtney McRoberts, and they are streaming at us from Nova Scotia. Charles grew up in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Canada. He graduated from Auburn Drive High School in 2009 and worked six years doing mental health security. He currently works in a group home for the mentally ill. Courtney grew up on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia and graduated from Auburn Drive High School in 2008. She went back to school to become a registered holistic nutritionist as one of her goals is to help others with their mental health and overall quality of life. Allow me to please introduce my guests, Charles and Courtney. Thank you both so much for coming on the show. Yeah, appreciate Thank it, man. You. Thank you. It's great to have you both on, especially straight from Nova Scotia. Would you please introduce yourself to our listeners and share part of your story before we dive and get going? And please, both of you, share your, men your role relating to mental health. Yeah, definitely. So my name is Charles Hampton. As you said, I grew up in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Canada. I, uh, I worked six years as a mental health security officer and a shift supervisor and currently work in a group home for the mentally ill as well. But on a personal experience, I've also dealt with my own, my own bouts of depression and social anxiety. Um, little backdrop on Courtney and I, we met when I was 13 and she was 14. Wow. And then, yeah, man, first loves, first yeah, loves. <laughs> yeah, now I'm 29, she's 30. So 15 years later, we come about. And That's just amazing. To, yeah. Love yeah, to man. hear that type of stuff. And how about you, Courtney? Please introduce yourself to our listeners. My name is Courtney. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm a registered holistic nutritionist and I also have a regular nine to five job as a courier. Um, I'm a mom of two and just recently ventured out to, create, to creating motivational, relatable, uplifting content with Charles um, as we both realized how important it is to be a positive influence to others. Of course. Um, mental health is very familiar to me. I've struggled with depression and anxiety for a majority of my life, probably as early as like elementary years. Um, at first, I think a lot of it was just parental influence and just absorbing like others around me, um, how they were, and then it progressed as I got older. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, my experience. Well, thank you both for sharing that. I know the value you're gonna provide on this episode, not just from professional experience, but personal perspective, as we all know, goes a long way. So thank you again for sharing. And on each episode, I share a mental health story of someone who is famous because I want to let you, the listeners know, you are not alone. I want you to understand that even though someone looks like they're healthy from the outside, they may not be on the inside too. And for today's episode, I will introduce the mental health related story of Mariah Carey. And we all know Mariah Carey from all the great music over the years, but in April 2019, Mariah Carey told People Magazine that she has had a lifelong battle with bipolar 2. For those of you not familiar with bipolar disorder, it is also called manic depressive illness and is a brain disorder that causes unusual shifts in mood, energy, activity levels, and the ability to carry out day-to-day -day tasks, and that's according to the National Institute of Health. While there are four types of bipolar disorder, they are characterized by moods, with bipolar one being the most severe, I learned. And Carrie was diagnosed in 2001, but it was in denial until the last few years. I wanted to include that because I know that may resonate with a few of you listening on out there. And this revelation is one of the handful of times that a celebrity has come forward and spoke about this specific mental health challenge. 
I wanted to include a quote from Mariah, though, where she said, quote, I didn't want to carry around the stigma of a lifelong disease that would define me and potentially end my career, she told people. I was terrified of losing everything. She hopes that making these public statements will help eliminate the stigma. And she added, I'm hopeful we can get to a place where the stigma is lifted from people going through anything alone. It can be incredibly isolating and it does not have to define you. And I refuse to allow it to define me or control me. To end this write up, I learned in the article that people delay getting help with bipolar disorders because, according to Dr. Thais in the article, quote, nobody wants to have a serious mental health illness. Beyond denial, there is the understandable real wish to have it not be true. Charles, what do you take away from this story or her public statements on mental health? I think it's very unfortunate, but also very relatable. I think that uh, from a personal experience and from what I've seen in my own careers, it seems to be something that a lot of people do have trouble with dealing with because it's like, you don't want that form of judgment against you, right? And there's so much, the sti- I think the stigma is better now than it's ever been, thank God, but yes still there at the same time and you kind of don't want anything like that associated with your name it can be terrifying yeah and like you're saying it's part of our health right when we break our ankle what do we do we go get fixed up we take a month or two off exactly. if yep. you're feeling some depression come on why does society look at you and but we're breaking down the stigmas like you said and we yep. have come a long way but hopefully by us collaborating on this mission this podcast we can yep. help break down that stigma a little more and Courtney, what did you take about that story? Um, I agree. It's hard um, when you have a mental illness because she's right. There are people out there who will judge you and who will make assumptions, which puts yeah. you at risk of being treated differently and then potentially not equally. Yeah. Um, and it's something that sometimes can just be easier to pretend like nothing's wrong, but eventually the denial will catch up and then it will be easier to come to a place of just accepting it so that you can get the help that you need. Well said, both of you. Thank you both for sharing that. And now it is time for the main event, guys. On each episode, my guests and I will go over this series of six questions, which only slightly varies depending on the guests is talking about their own or others' mental health. Today, we have both perspectives, so feel free to interject them as you please. You guys ready to go? Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. Let's do it. Many would agree that the more common or talked about type of mental disparities or mood disorders, anxiety disorders, or schizophrenia disorders, what areas did you come across the most? Courtney, you first. I think for me, mood and anxiety disorders would have to be the most common um, that I come across. It's pretty common in my family. There's a quite a history of depression um, and anxiety. It was pretty much like a complete norm growing up in our household. And as I mentioned earlier, played quite a big role in my life as well, um, and still does. For me, it never really went away per se, but you just find better ways of dealing with it. And the more you become familiar with it and recognize the signs, you realize how many people are affected by it on a regular basis. That's a great way to put it. And I'm sure we're gonna get into those specifics as we go through the show. So I'm excited to learn, but how about professionally speaking, what type of mental health disparities are you coming across the most? So for me, what I've seen most is schizophrenia. I've seen that across. Yeah, let's talk about that. And then all, across all different types of spectrums. So I've seen it to the point where, you know, when people think about schizophrenia, they think of like the craziest thing they can probably ever think about. Like the <laughs> shit you see in movies. You right, know what I'm right, right. I've seen it on those spectrums personally, but I've also seen it on levels where I couldn't tell the difference between that person and myself. Okay. So all across the board, I've seen it whether it's far left or far right, it's everywhere there. So that's, I'm most familiar with schizophrenia myself. And then after that, I appreciate the perspective on that. I know it's something that's not maybe as talked about as the anxiety and depression because they're a little more widespread, I could say. But Charles, you mentioned you've been in this mental health profession for a while. When did you first decide that a career relating to mental health or at least taking a stance on mental health advocacy was the right path for you? So when I first got involved there, it happened off fluke because my brother was working there and he got me a job there. And I guess the advocacy came once I realized that the people I'm seeing surrounded all around me were not much different than what I am. And if anything, a lot of them were more relatable to me. Like we were more alike than we were different. And I didn't realize that going into it because I thought 
I believe the stigma too, until I've seen it firsthand. I've seen people in there that were just really stressed out, like I get. People in there that were going through depression, like I have. Um, anxiety, like I have my own forms of anxiety as well. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't even think Courtney knows this, one of the biggest reasons why I think mental health, like taking a, a stance on it, is because I have a cousin and like we're really close. And he's had for the last couple of years dealing with suicidal thoughts. And there were times where it got really scary and right. glad he confided in me. But he told his father once and his father told him that he needs Jesus and he needs to go to church. And that's all he said. All he said. And that blew my mind. I could not believe my uncle said that. I couldn't believe my cousin was telling me that. And right then and there, I realized like the old school ways to think is like, people need to speak up about this more often. You know what? It's, I'm glad you said that. That generation, you're a man. You muster your emotions and you move on. And I think in one of the mental health stories in the beginning of the show, I believe it was Kevin Love, the NBA basketball player, who said something similar about, you know, musking his feelings. And yeah. it's a shame, but again, stigmas are just slowly being broken down. Now, in five, ten years, the progress that will be made will be significant, I'm sure. But we just need to continue to do our part. And Courtney, when was that moment for you? I would say I realized it when... I was like at my own personal lows, like lowest of lows. Um, when I felt like no one understood, no one took me seriously. When people would ask like, what's the big deal? Like it was just something I could just snap out of. Right. Um, like at those moments, I realized that it needed to be talked about more and I needed to start sharing my experiences and my stories and struggles so people could have something that they could relate to mm -hmm. so they wouldn't feel so alone. Um, I think that's the key. Like when you're having a hard time dealing with mental health, you need to feel like someone understands, is relatable, you're not alone, will listen to you, and will support you. You couldn't be more right. People that don't resonate with that feeling think it's just a feeling like a laughing or a watching TV. It's they, yeah, don't, they, they, they can't put themselves in those shoes. Do you remember yeah. what your first experience of advocacy was? Your first initiatives? What were you doing to raise awareness? I think for me, I just started talking about it. I think it's gonna sound crazy, but no, I mean you're I right. It's all it is, it's just talking. Well, when 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 that happened with my cousin in particular, I did not hold like I care about him a lot. Like that's I pretty much called my family out. Yeah. It, everybody just seemed to be like nonchalant about it. Like it wasn't a big deal that he told him to go to church and he eats Jesus. That blew my mind. So like everyone surrounding my family, I really called them out on that and I didn't hold back whatsoever. I think that's the first time I can remember like a huge stance that just really, yeah. I guess, started for me. That's well, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's unbelievable and the courage that you took to, it's in any situation, no one ever wants to be the odd man out making the perspective that no one agrees yeah. with. And you raised awareness right then and there. And I'm sure, I'm sure they remembered what you said as you were yeah. so passionate about it. But Courtney, what advice can you give to our listeners as what may be considered a potential early sign they may be starting to develop a mental health disparity? Um, there's always like the general ones, like losing interest in things you normally enjoy, not having motivation for the things that like used to fuel you, yep. fuel you. Um, wanting to sleep more, maybe a change in appetite. Um, I realized something was off with me when my thoughts seemed like distorted or habitually like negative and dark, maybe withdrawn and like the feeling that I was kind of like losing my sense of self. I wasn't really recognizing myself anymore. Yeah. Charles, what advice do you have? Uh, I would say for me, it was noticing that wasn't, uh, I was losing a lot of sleep. I mean, that's a huge one for me. I wasn't sleeping well at all. And there was a lot of like really dark suicidal thoughts myself, mm -hmm. but I was still comfortable in that misery at the time. I thought it was normal and I didn't even realize it. Yeah. So, yeah. Sometimes you have to live through it to know what to react. What is that early sign? That's why I really enjoy this question because I want to help people in the shoes that we were once in. Okay. Yeah. It's not going to be as bad, but bridging off that, we got to pick three, and I say just three because I want the three most important things our listeners can do on a daily or short-term basis to improve that mental health once they realize they may be developing a mental health disparity or they've had one for a while and they've been in denial, they've neglected it. 
What advice can you offer, Charles, and some three initiatives? First one is exercising. That's probably my biggest number one, because even in those moments I was in, that's something I still did. Yeah. And to be honest, it might have been the only thing at the time that was keeping me afloat. Yeah. It allowed me to release that energy for the time being and like make do, I guess. So. Number two would be reading a hell of a lot more, as much as you can. Like, Love it. That's probably the big, between that and the exercise itself, it's probably the biggest thing that just really changed everything for me was going into something, knowing that I don't know anything and choosing to learn everything I can about it so I can better understand myself. And I would say the third one is finding some sort of outlet of creative expression. What was yours? Mine is music. I've recorded music since like grade seven. I get a studio in my house and my friends and my, my cousins come over Amazing. and things like that. So mine's writing and music. What kind of music are you creating? A lot of hip hop. Nice. Oh, so you're vocal. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I, that, I was actually, I've been, we had coronavirus come up, but I, in the beginning of the year, I was thinking of maybe taking singing lessons just to learn. But uh, how about you, Courtney? What can you offer for our listeners? Which three things can you recommend? Um, I would say affirmations is a huge one for me. I kind of didn't believe in that stuff at first. Um, and then when I started reading, um, it just kept coming up. So I started trying it. Let's dig um, a more it, into that. Yeah. Affirmations. What do you mean? Um, so Louise Hay is someone that I came across and she has a whole book on affirmations. Um, so just kind of like training your mind to think, um, in a different way than you usually do. Like usually, like if you're beating yourself up, saying I don't like this about myself, like that about myself, um, getting in the habit of like switching that to something more positive and telling yourself that positive thing. And eventually you'll start training your brain to going to that instead of something negative. Thank you for so explaining that to everybody listening on. That was great, great explanation. Yeah, so that that has been like, a super um, positive thing for me on a daily basis. Um, also journaling has been a huge part of my journey, like letting my emotions out, writing them down, identifying them. Um, it seems to be like a good outlet for me. And also exercising, we have that in common, um, like whatever that looks like to anyone else, like if it's yeah. yoga or working out or walking, um, I find for me that instantly makes me feel a hundred times better. Yeah, I'm glad you both, uh, mentioned exercise. I think it's important for everybody listening on to understand that working out may be more important for your mental health than your physical health, in my for opinion. Sure. What's your guys' Absolutely. stance on that? No, 100%. Like the benefits you get physically is cool too, don't get me wrong, but it's always a mental standpoint first. Like I have some of my clearest, most positive thoughts while I'm working out. I come oh, up yeah, with some of the ideas. I feel, like, I feel like I can conquer the world mid workout. Cause it's just so much clarity within my mind. It, it, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I, I think it's great how you said that in a time where, especially right now, here we are coronavirus lockdown, we could still do some sort of exercise in our home or take a walk, like you said, and it's a very easy time to put on the weight. And we all know that when you're overeating, it can do bodily damage as well, as far as maybe getting depressed or eating too much sugars and the wrong types of food. It does not do any good for your mental health. But Courtney, you guys just gave us some both great short-term initiatives that our listeners can start to create a more positive mental headspace. Let's delve a little deeper, look a little longer here. What are two long-term commitments our listeners can make to create a healthier mindset? I think for me personally, the biggest um, thing that I changed that made the biggest impact would be um, just to choose your surroundings wisely. Um, I don't think you realize how much of an impact others and their energies affect you, but the more you surround yourself with positive, uplifting people, the more you'll be able to stay in a positive headspace. Um, I also think that goal setting is a good tool to keep you in a healthy mindset. If you have something in your life that you know that you want, mapping it out and working hard at it gives you something to stay focused on. I like the way you put that too. I know it definitely works with mental health. And as you get older, when you have something waking you up every day, when you have a reason to wake up and you're excited, I know for me, granted, I wish I still had the paychecks my financial jobs offered. But once I went entrepreneur and did the part-time jobs to make ends meet, I'm happier 
overall because I'm done. Every day I wake up, I'm like, all right, I finished this yesterday. I got to get it done. I write down. You look forward to it. Yeah. yeah, I'm recording these podcasts like this. This is this is a, this is what I enjoy, and it's something yeah. that is building my brand, building my business. But even more important, I'm getting to connect with amazing people like you guys, breaking down mental health stigmas, and we're connecting halfway across the globe right here. Which is yeah, even more cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, Charles, what two longer initiatives are you in favor of? Uh, for me personally, number one is probably sleep and really putting an emphasis on it because when I don't sleep well for periods of time, I am not the same person. Like, I don't like that person I, I am when I don't sleep. She knows it, she gets the brunt of it. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, like, I'm a night and day different person. So, that's something I need to focus on for like, Probably more than anything. And uh, I would say the other thing is a lot of what she said and just choosing your surroundings. Yeah, let's talk about it. I've been focusing on that probably. It probably started around 19 or 20. And I can say because I've started that, I have a very solid foundation of friends and family that like I know only have nothing but my best interests, no ulterior motives know anything like that like we just have that mutual respect and love for each other that we just want to see each other be the best we can be and i think that's crucial i think it's extremely <laughs> crucial i'm actually come next wednesday i have my manuscript i'm giving to an illustrator we are working on a mental health children's book together and one of the oh, nice. one of the things i tackle is um having being so having being social and having a great support system and it doesn't mean you have to have a thousand friends going to the clubs. It's having people who are going to tell you how it is, the things you need to hear, not you want to hear. People yep. who are there when the times get tough. And then just yep. to be supportive of others so they're supportive of you. I think that's huge for mental health, just being yep. social, talking. And those are all great, great initiatives. So I'm really excited to hear your guys' take on this next question, number six. Charles, what are some ways you plan on raising awareness for the importance of mental health in the future? In the future, well, as you found us on, we're going to do a lot more content on our Instagram page, which is going to branch out to other pages, get a Facebook page, YouTube page, and all that stuff, too. I think that's such an easy way to get something out there to a lot of people very quick. Yeah. Well, think, and, about, uh, us. think about us right here. Well, that's just it, right? And, like, if we never made that page, we wouldn't be on here right now with you. It's crazy how the world can work so fast. And, and it's, it's that crazy, man. It's not just LinkedIn. It's, I always think when I'm starting these podcasts, yeah, your network is great, but how deep is your network really going to be? You have to step mm-hmm. outside your comfort zone, which for a lot of people with mental health disparities, that's not an easy thing to do. You step back and say, hey, I see your page, and I've we got see, something I, similar going, going on a few weeks away. Make it happen. So if you're still so getting great social say, media yeah. up and running, I'm not going to record this, obviously. I'm saying, and Courtney, I can what, check what back are you with working, you you working with him on this? Do you have okay. anything else going on? If you want, we'll just zoom for a couple seconds, um, or you can send me a, like a voice memo on your phone. Mainly the Instagram um, right now, just like, just kind of starting over where we're going to go with it. We want to inspire, raise awareness, and share our stories, help others with their journeys. I also want to integrate more focus on mental health and the emotions well, what you guys side think? of things with my knowledge. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah, when I, I went you to school, school I like kind of um, <laughs> was on like a it's one always track scary, but, you know, you're just talking about your own mind story. of thinking like you're just like really like comfortable to um, healing and the benefits uh, it's great to yeah. you. Only yeah, I mean, I'll tell you when like I first started doing this, I'm, food I'm just talking about Food and supplements and those types of things and I just realized like how things and. The mental as an entrepreneur, and you want to learn how to do it all, and you can't afford to have um, people so doing it. So the other yeah. podcast like I started first, the entrepreneurs on one. The mental I committed to three a week. Little did I know how much work, work it was to record three a week, edit three, three a week, week. Part, social media for three a weeks. So I was just side of mental health. Dying out. Now we're just one a week on both. That angle allows me to add you on and maybe not give a few die and have inventory on who may not be as familiar with that side of things. I have a note here. Check in with you both. Um, so like the holistic. I mean, you guys will do me a favor. I've been slacking. Things, um, if you guys can rate the podcast like five stars on whoever you're listening to and leave um, a little so recommendation about how our, our day went, just how our like meeting food, went, just sure. supplements. that would be really, really just appreciated. Like I was, the I've been issue that you have so at long hand and, and they. They, uh, I know they I focus on it, about it so um, I appreciate but it. like a lot of and times, if you have any other friends that would want to share their like story, I try to keep the show going be, off referrals. Um, though I know they're 
a good just like for you guys, it's tough for me to get a good yet. show um, cold like, calling. You know, personally cold for messaging. me, I've had help. Yeah, I just for, like, killed it. So um, as long as I can remember, when I check in with you for the uh, social media info, if I don't hear from you by then, different um, kinds I'd love of feelings. To, you know, and at the one end of my give them an interview, journey, give them like good marketing for their content I'm looking well. at it and I'm just like, okay. why am I not getting better? Why am I not getting better? And I guys, but we'll go over that. We get closer to time. Health part of it was the reason why I was being held back. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. a great day. You too of of your health i think you can do everything right but as long as your mind's not there and um like your your emotions aren't where they should be and you're not you're not a hundred percent in your mind i don't think you can um like move forward with much else I appreciate the insight there. And Charles, Courtney, thank you both so much for coming on. I know our listeners are going to see all the value in your show today. I really loved how you both had exercise just because we are in the quarantine and it's not just about your physical health. So we were able to shed light on that. I loved how we talk about in the beginning, Charles, that story that made you really come to the mental health world. And Courtney, how you have the same passion that's stemming from years of studying health, learning from your both personal and professional experiences. The advice is invaluable on this episode, so I am very thankful you both decided to join me on this show. But it is time for the last word, and I do this on my other podcast series that I have, what it's really like to be an entrepreneur as well, because I want our listeners to really get to know the guests I bring on. Is there something that you would like to share with the listeners that we did not get to touch on yet today, Courtney? Um, I think I'd just like to give my last word of advice. Um, Like, don't give up. Uh, For every reason that you feel like you can't go on, there's always 10 more reasons why you can. Um, Never give up on yourself. Give yourself compassion and love yourself, even on the days where it might be really hard. Find a good support system, um, like with or without mental health issues. This is so important. Mm -hmm. Read, write, find your passion, make the best out of life. Um, Once you realize you're capable of whatever you want, to do with life like once you realize that you just realize how much power you hold and life honestly becomes like a whole new meaning to you well said thank you for sharing that charles your last word please i mean after she just said something like that i don't know how to compare it <laughs> that's kind of a crazy top up <laughs> now i'll just say uh it's important for people to know that they're not alone and even if you like even if you have come to people and they just don't understand it, don't get mm-hmm. discouraged because it doesn't mean that there's not people out there that can relate to you and can help guide you and get the help you need. I guess well, it does come to find that support system. Yeah, you both just gave two outstanding last words. I don't know if one was better than another, and you, don't, you came close, Charles. So you- <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, now I know you both share the Instagram account that I found you on, but would you mean please, share, please sharing that account and any other social media website or ways for our listeners? You can find us on our Instagram account at Charles and Courtney. And you can also find us on our Facebook page at Charles and Courtney. And it's social media time and we're on whichever platform you like to use. It's a mental health break on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. And on Twitter, it's podcast by Lancey. So you get updates from this show and what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. Of course, my handles are at Vincent A. Lancey on all social media and YouTube. And my website is vincentalancy.com. If you check out my books, DM me. I'd love to hear from you. We have Left for Dead, a story of redemption, and how to transform your mindset when the norm has changed. Both are on Amazon now. If you enjoyed today's episode, please continue listening and rate A Mental Health Break with Vincent A. Lancy five stars. I work hard to find value delivering guests for you on each episode. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all on the next episode of A Mental Health Break with Vincent A. Lancey.